All right, so now we are here um, with the mitochondria. What just happened is we went through glycolysis, and at the end of glycolysis, it produced this molecule called pyruvate. Pyruvate's produced in the cytoplasm. Now, the process we're going to look at called pyruvate oxidation occurs inside the mitochondria. So one of the first things that has to happen is transport. So a pyruvate molecule has to be moved from the cytoplasm into the mitochondria. Uh, so we're going to just quickly bring it in here. Um, and then we'll talk about it for a second, how it gets in there. Now, there's something else to keep in mind. This process, and hopefully you've studied membrane transport already, uh, it's going to be active transport. which means it's going to cost energy. So this is going to cost an ATP to bring the pyruvate into the mitochondria. This is one case where um, bacteria, because they don't have mitochondria, um, and all these reactions take place in their cytoplasm, save a little bit of, of energy uh, during this process. But in eukaryotic cells uh, with mitochondria, um, which is all, all eukaryotic cells, uh, we have to bring it in, and so it's going to cost a little bit to do that. But that's what's going to happen. The and this is missed in a lot of different places. We kind of go a lot of times in, in a lot of textbooks from glycolysis to the citric acid cycle. That's what you see. Um, and then we're kind of missing. Glycolysis ends with pyruvate. The citric acid cycle begins with acetyl-CoA. So where's the connection between pyruvate and acetyl-CoA? And, and it's right here. It's in pyruvate oxidation. Another reason why it's so that one reason why that's important is because it's going to cost some energy. Another reason it's going to be important is not only because it's that bridge between the two reactions, but there's going to be an oxidation event that makes NADH here. So we have more energy kind of being stored during this process. It's an important process all by itself. So it's a very short one. We're just going to look at it. Um, if you want to look at the equation for what's going to occur here, it's just going to be pyruvate plus. Uh, an NAD plus molecule are going to make acetyl-CoA. Don't think called acetyl-CoA, which we're going to show you uh, here in a second. Plus the NADH. So the pyruvate is going to become the acetyl-CoA. The NAD plus is going to become uh, the NADH. And what's going to happen here? is we're also going to produce a molecule of carbon dioxide. So remember the pyruvate is a three carbon molecule. You can see it here. The acetyl-CoA, the CoA is something else. This is gonna be something attached, it's a coenzyme. But the pyruvate is now gonna be turned into this acetyl group and it's only gonna have two carbons. And so one of those carbons are gonna leave now as carbon dioxide. That's, that's essentially what happens. So as far as reactions go, um, there's a, a large enzyme complex here called the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. And we're not going to go into it in a lot of detail, but it's a very large enzyme that carries out uh, a lot of activity. It's found here inside the mitochondria, and so it's what carries out pyruvate oxidation. So it binds to a pyruvate molecule. It binds to the NAD uh, plus, and then an oxidation event occurs. And during that oxidation, electrons from the pyruvate uh, are going to go to form the NADH here inside the mitochondria. So this is the mitochondria this is the matrix of the mitochondria. Uh, and that's where this NADH is going to be inside the matrix of the mitochondria. As that happens, okay, so what's going to occur is that we're going to be left with then uh, the, I'm going to draw it the, yeah, uh, this way. I'll draw it, I'm going to flip it around here. Okay, so we're going to put the, the methyl group here, the carbonyl group here, and then, so that's all that we have left here, uh, we're going to get the, this coenzyme molecule called uh, coenzyme A. And we're not going to really look at its structure there, but it's going to just be a carrier 
of the acetyl group at this point. Now we lost this carbon, and as the oxidation occurred, the electrons are coming from hydrogens, all right, going here to the to make the NADH, all right. So we can say we also have our NADH right, well, produced here. Uh, well, I guess we already drew that, so we'll leave that there. Uh, and then this carbon and this these two oxygens are cut off, carbon and two oxygens. That's our CO2. And that's pretty much it. All right, so it's a fairly simplistic uh, process in certain ways. Uh, in other ways, there's a, there's a lot of things going on. Um, but uh, all you really need to know is that a pyruvate molecule is turned into an acetyl-CoA. That happens during an oxidation event that removes electrons from it. Uh, and as those electrons are removed, one of the carbons are also removed as carbon dioxide. So pretty simple process. Know the, the formula. Know where it happens. It happens inside the mitochondria in our eukaryotic cells. Know that the original pyruvate was out in the cytoplasm at the end of glycolysis, and now it has to be brought in here. Also, something worth adding in here. Uh, this happens during what we call aerobic respiration, which means respiration in the presence of oxygen. If oxygen isn't present, then we can continue with what's called anaerobic respiration, but at that case, in that case, the pyruvate does not come into the mitochondria. The pyruvate would stay out in the cytoplasm, and it can then be broken down. Often it's turned into lactic acid. Um, and that's happening uh, typically because we need more of these NAD pluses to run glycolysis, which is sort of another topic on fermentation. Um, but at this point, you just kind of need to know this. This is an uh, aerobic process, although oxygen is, isn't involved directly right here. The continuation of the process is going to uh, require oxygen. So the transport doesn't really happen. The reactants don't happen uh, in the absence of oxygen. Glycolysis can happen without oxygen. With or without oxygen, glycolysis is the same. But pyruvate oxidation uh, only occurs under aerobic conditions. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So this is a kind of a short one. And now from here, we're going to take this acetyl-CoA. So this is our acetyl-CoA. And we're going to move on into the citric acid cycle. That's going to be the end of our journey during the citric acid cycle. Uh, these carbons are going to be broken off eventually as more carbon dioxide. And so eventually the all the carbons of the carbon dioxide all the carbons of the glucose will be lost as carbon dioxide. Remember, there are also two of these. So it's uh, times two per glucose. And that's something else that is definitely worth making an extra note of. Uh, that, remember, glycolysis split the sugar into two three-carbon molecules that ended up as pyruvate. So now pyruvate oxidation is going to happen twice for every glucose molecule. So that means for this formula here, for every glucose molecule, you'll make two acetyl-CoAs, two NADH, and two CO2s. Right? So just keep those things in mind.